I see this as a, a potential new genre of product design for consumer products because the principles behind it are, uh, you know, can be applied to anything that people use in the home. But uh, I'll let you explain to the, to the world and the people here. Good. If you introduce yourself. All right. Well, thanks, Alec. Uh, hi, everyone. I'm JJ. Hi. <laughs> Um, well, it's great to be in front of you here, and uh, I'm really excited to show you the presentation. So we built a robot lamp, but <laughs> what does that mean? Uh, it, it, we call it BEAM, which stands for Bright Emotive Animated Module, and honestly, we came up with the acronym after we came up with the name. We wanted something snappy and something cute. And here is a render of what it could look like. One thing I, I always loved about home is that there's a certain way the sun sets every day that, you know, would cast this orange glow through my bedroom window and it would drape itself from wall to floor or rather from floor all the way to wall before it disappeared and it would just coat the whole room in this golden glow. And I'm, I'm sure you could picture what that's like in your minds. And, you know, just thinking about that gave me the shower thought. Um, which is that most lights that we see in the wild, in, in nature, move. You know, this idea of, of a static lamp, a lot of it is, is man-made. You know, we surround ourselves with this artificial sense of stillness. And so we designed a lamp that breaks through that. So picture this. It's a lamp that in the morning wakes up, stretches, gets ready for the day. It's alert <laughs> when the sun is out, but it's not lit. What is the point of a moving lamp? Well, you know, if you look at nature, if you look at trees, if you look at things that are supposed to be still, a lot of the time when you perceive them very closely, they're not. And we wanted to bring that movement into the home. Let me walk you through exactly how we built that. Can you imagine like the whole thing is about this tall and we 3D printed the whole thing um, with a 3D printer about this big. So. First thing I'd like to point out is the motion. Beam is actuated by four NEMA 17 stepper motors, which means it relies entirely on rotation, which you might have already noticed. But at first glance at its silhouette, it almost seems like it flexes and extends like an organic form. And that's something we really wanted to play up by using only rotation from these four joints, we create this entire lifelike movement. We also installed speakers on its base. You know, in the future, we plan to stick them somewhere near the head, somewhere near the source. But right now, it has the capacity to make sounds. You know, right now, motors sound like ee, ee. And so, you know, in order to address that and give it a more lifelike appeal, we also equipped it with different ways to express itself. And finally, the light. So the whole thing, and this is the real one, that one's the render has an array of LEDs inside it to make it adapt to different use cases and express itself in different ways. So you can imagine it as an ambient light source, but also as a more fixed spotlight there on the left. In the future, um, we intend to integrate AI into its personality so that it doesn't just repeat the same routines, but learns over time not just from you, but from its surroundings, it changes because everything in nature changes even slowly, you know, everything grows. And so we wanted to bring that into the home. Also, we wanted modularity so that it doesn't just grow in terms of its behavior, but it grows physically as well. Let me talk about what inspired, what it looks like and how it moves. Now, a lot of robotic things look like robotic things. I mean, if you've seen any robot dogs in Instagram reels or videos or robot arms. And we wanted to find a new grammar for this sort of design. 
And we saw a really interesting tension between technical innovation and natural aesthetics. So like even if we try to pursue high level tech, AI, all that, we want to ground technology by embracing nature. The first way we did this was by looking at um, nature visually. The branching structure that we see here emerges a lot in different structures like branches, antlers, and coral. And we decided to take that and apply it in our design. We were also inspired by the way things move in the wind, but also inspired by ourselves. I think there's a funny thing that happens with people when it comes to, well, the way we empathize with motion, you know? Like, a lot of Beam's own motions were actually mimicked from ourselves. You know, the way we move, the way our heads tilt, because I, I, I think people can perceive something human about the way things move, even when the thing is inhuman. And finally, we took a page from, well, nature in, its, in our experience of it. I think you can imagine a time, you know, this is from the Lascaux Caves in France, when people were on the peripheries of the wild and nature could do what it wanted without answering to humanity. And right now that only exists on the peripheries of our world today in you know, an ever decreasing fashion. But once upon a time, people themselves were on the periphery. We were on the outskirts of nature and nature could do its own thing. And we wanted to imagine what it would be like to be surrounded by objects in your home that had their own sense of agency, that were outside of us, not just in service of us. And also mystery, which is why we embraced illusion in its form. So it's our hope that by looking at nature and taking a page from its appearance, its motion, and our experience of it, we could target core human sensibilities, things that no matter how fast paced the world has changed, no matter how far we become, how far we go from you know, our primal selves, I feel like there are certain things that have stayed the same. And so by guiding technical innovation through these core human sensibilities, we can reimagine the home, not just as a collection of objects that serve us, but as an emotional ecosystem for us. Um, so that's me. I'm JJ, Lu Ling, Sing and Wei. This is our team. And I feel very proud to say that I think we're very equipped to usher in that vision of a more naturalistic world. Wei specializes in design engineering, but also works with all sorts of materials and fabrication. He is fantastic. Sing is our project manager. She is on time with everything sent, all of the emails communicates with everybody, but she also has a special sensitivity to space and spatial design and the human environment. Luling designs sound and also cooks really well, but he is fantastic at scoring. He scored all our videos and sound designed Beam itself. And then there's me. I uh, like to play with shapes. I'm just gonna share one more thing. The you know, one thing that really struck me, I wasn't here, but two days ago when we were setting up, apparently uh, an old Italian man came by, you know, took a look at the work and admired it for a brief minute before leaning in to say, you know, when I see this lamp, it makes me feel less alone. Thank you. As I said before, quite an inspiring uh, project which uh, has huge potential. And I was saying to Zin the other day, you know, maybe some big corporations are going to snap you all up. They ought to do. I'm hoping it's a UK corporation, but I can imagine it being somewhere from where you're, where you're from, Korea or Philippines.